I am really excited for this one. You guys know I love to do my home blends. And we have a couple of my own blends up here, as well as the classics. Let's go. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, drinking buddies. So first up, the classic Prudent Pappy. Uh, this is going to be two parts maker's cask strength. That's going to be this bottle here. We should probably get some of the bottles we used out as we go. Two parts of that to one part regular larceny. So that's how you make a prudent pappy. You take one part larceny to two parts maker's cask strength. And then I let it sit in the bottle here for at least two weeks with a barrel aging spiral inside. Um, that is not normally common, but I wanted to get more age on it, hence pappy being older. Uh, next up we have our prudent WLW. How did I make this one? This was gonna be one part FAE01 to one part larceny barrel proof. Now, you don't have to use Maker's FAE01, you could use BRT01, you could use BEP, you could use pretty much, you could use this as well, you could totally use this. Um, I chose the um, FAE01 because it's American Oak, so this would qualify as well. Just I didn't want to put any French Oak in there, so Maker's 46 cast strength wouldn't work, your Maker's um, private selections wouldn't work, and then the O2s of the, the wood finishing series are usually French oak, so. All right, next up we have poor man's birthday bourbon. What goes in poor man's birthday bourbon? Equal parts Old Forester Statesman and Old Forester 1910. That's kind of the odd man out here because the rest of these are all gonna be pappy alternatives. Uh, this one is going to be poor man's pappy. So that one is one part Weller 12 to two parts Weller 107. I don't see the regular one. It's not a pick, but that's that's the one. And then this last guy over here, this is going to be Prudent Old Fit. So this is a reverse Prudent Pappy. So this is going to be two parts makers, sorry, two parts larceny barrel proof to one part regular makers. So, and we'll put another larceny barrel proof over here. Why not? I have lots of these because I tend to buy them and then not like them, so. I give them to people or use them in blinds, blends. <laughs> um, I will say the Larceny Barrel Proofs are getting better though. So I've, I've hated on them for quite a while, but but I'm, I'm not a total hater. I like them for blends and also they are getting better each year. Let's dive in. Glass one, you know what it is, I don't. Very citrusy and fresh. Very citrusy and bright. Honey. Man, if I didn't know better, I thought I would literally think I'm smelling like uh, old fashioned because you got like that citrus zest and some sweetness for sure. That one's that one's good, but I have high hopes for the rest because I think that it's just not delivering enough on the palate. Um, it's a little flat. I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with that. Whatever's in that glass. I know it's not this guy, um, but yeah, there's some brown sugar here. There's some bourbon vanilla, slight peanut. It just falls so flat. I don't know what's going on there. Much better nose here. This one's more. This one's more dank. This one's more dark. Like leather shoes, cigar box, black tea, like sweet tea. Mm. Man, that is a lot better than glass one. That is maple syrup all over some waffles for me. Um, also your classic bourbon notes are here, caramels and vanillas. That's good. That's really good. This one's a little more dank too. This has got some wet, like wet wood, damp basement, some barrel char. 
cherry. This is the first one I've gotten cherry on the nose. Yeah, cherry candy. Cherry for days on that. Um, yeah, that is really solid. Uh, I, re I really, I really dig that. Um, yeah, brown sugar. Um, some nice oak here. This one tastes older, so I think this is one of the guys that dropped one of those barrel spa barrel aging spirals in. If you drop those into really young bourbon, you're going to end up with some older qualities and they don't really erase those young grain things. Only time will do that. But the oak extraction is fast because it's completely, you know, engulfed in the bottle. So the, the barrel, the barrel spiral extracts really fast. So you get the nice oak flavors, but it, it, it doesn't really do much to a young bourbon. Whereas, so if you put it in something with some age on it to begin with, you make something really nice. Now this one's more of the like the, the what I got off of the first one where it's like bright and citrusy, but a little bit a little bit of a hint of something like a meadow, like with hay, uh, like grass growing. Yeah, like oh man, now that I say that, just really giving me vibes. I'm like at a creek. I'm about to go fishing. This is nice. Yeah, that's just really delivering on flavor. A lot of cinnamon, a lot of brown sugar, slight, uh, like a caramel peanut, slight cherry candy, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It's got some heat going on. I think that's this guy because of the heat. That's the hottest one here. Like around 118 proof. I'm gonna have to do some research because I honestly don't remember. I honestly don't remember. Uh, let's see, 110 plus 110 plus 124 uh, divided by three. Let's see, that's 334 uh, divided by three. So 100 and 112 proof. Wow, okay, all right. Assuming my math is correct, about 112 proof. That is drinking hotter than 112 proof. So I will say that. Okay, so now that I went back to it, it's not as hot. It's just more giving me like great flavors. So far, that's our winner. That one's really solid. Last one up. Oh, this has to be the, by process of elimination, this has got to be the poor man's birthday bourbon. Those are all weeders. <laughs> banana candy right off the bat. Oh yeah, banana runts. Fresh baked banana bread. A little bit of a barrel and a little bit of vanilla. Oh, oh yeah, that's really good. Um, hmm. Yeah, bananas foster, um, toasted marshmallow on here, caramel, oak, shorter finish than I'd like. It's pretty much gone. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's really good though. I don't know if I like it more than some of the Prudence uh, and poor man's, etc., up here. Hmm. Well, drinking buddies, I'm gonna go through these again one more time. I'll try to tell you, I'm gonna try to make some guesses, see if I can figure out what's what. Um, and I'll get my rankings. All right, drinking buddies. So if we are going purely off trying to copy that, that, um, Pappy flavor profile. I think there's two up here that really do that. That's this one and this one. Now I know that, that I said this one tasted pretty flat the first time. The second time through, I picked up a lot more cherry. I picked up a lot more vanilla and I picked up a lot more barrel char. Um, I still feel like this is the poor man's Pappy. 
And I feel like, to be perfectly honest, this is one of the blends that I just don't think is worth it because Weller 12 is a great experience on its own to enjoy something older and awesome and blended to perfection. And Weller 107, I feel the same way about. It is a beautiful bourbon, it's 107 proof, and they blended it to perfection. Me mixing it in a, in a bottle and, you know, we letting it sit for two weeks. I feel like I'm delivering a product that isn't better than either of these bourbons, personally. Meanwhile, the poor man's pat, or sorry, that's poor man's pappy. Meanwhile, the prudent pappies, the prudent varieties, you're taking a Maker's Mark product and you're taking a Larceny product, something from Heaven Hill, sorry, something from Heaven Hill and something from Jim Beam, and you are delivering something that tastes somewhat similar to Maker's, to, somewhat similar to pappy. Not in the same, you know, ballpark, but it's certainly the same sport. Now, uh, for, for the reason I say this one delivers those flavor profiles, the Prudent WLW, no, that's gonna be comparable to this guy. It delivers on that signature cherry in such a fun way. The peanut is disappeared, or if it's there, it's subtle and it's undertoned. Meanwhile, on these two, there's just a little bit too much peanut for me to be fooled. Now, for the Prudent Old Fits though, if we're talking about Old Fitz, which I think is this one, it is delivering. It tastes like Old Fitzgerald. It tastes very similar to this bottle right here. So if you want to make an approximation of Old Fitzgerald at home, reverse Prudent Pappy. So two parts Larceny Barrel Proof, one part Standard Maker's Mark. That's how you do Prudent, w, uh, Prudent Old Fitz. Now why do we do two parts of the Larceny? Well, Larceny and Old Fitzgerald are from the same distillery. So you're basically just taking something, you know, around that six to eight year range, that's what the Larceny Barrel Proofs are, and then you're adding in some six year old, a little bit sweeter, a little bit less peanutty um, maker's product in there to help give it some complexity, and it ends up tasting older. You throw in a barrel spiral, you have something really special. Your recipe is pretty good. I think that, I think this is the, okay, back up here. I'm, I'm rambling at this point. Poor Man's Pappy, Prudent Old Fitz, Prudent Pappy, Prudent WLW, Poor Man's Birthday Bourbon. Now, I, I can't, it's very difficult to rank these because this is just so different. So we're gonna say, great job if you wanna try uh, Poor Man's Birthday Bourbon at home. I recommend mixing these two together and then um, try it with a Barrel Aging Spiral in there and see what happens. We're, we're setting that guy aside. It's a success. It's one I would recommend. Now, but ranking these four is a little bit different because we're trying to approximate unicorn um, unicorn wheat bourbons, weeded bourbons. So um, I think I'm going to go with my favorite being this one, my second favorite being this one, my third favorite being this one, and my fourth favorite being this one, but it's close. They're all really good. It's just Weller 12 is great. Weller 107 is great. You're not doing it any favors by blending it together. That's just how I feel about it. So let's see if I got a queen sweep or if I'm a fool. So this is obviously the, the poor man's birthday. Poor man's birthday. This should be, I said this was the prudent W, or this is the prudent old Fitz. No, it was the prudent pappy. So no queen sweep here today. Um, prudent, uh, sorry, poor man's pappy. Poor man's pappy. And... Poor man's pappy. I got confused there for a second. I thought I screwed this entire thing up, but I didn't. <laughs> All right. Um, this one is going to be the Prudent Old Fitz. Yeah, Prudent Old Fitz. And then this one is the um, Prudent WLW. So our favorite was the Prudent WLW. That continues to be the best home blend that I've done. Once again, it was two parts FAE01 to one part Larceny Barrel Proof. Um, and you could change out the, the the FAE01 for Maker's Cask Strain. I don't think that would be a problem, especially if you're doing the, the barrel aging spiral. Because this is a bottle from like 2021. You can't really use this anymore. If you picked up this year's BEP, that one would also work because it's uh, American Oak. Anyway, drinking buddies, I hope you try some of these at home. They're really fun. It's a really fun way to customize your drinking experience, to feel like you gave something to it and it's really fun. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you. And um, yeah, 
Um, this is great. I can't believe I get, you know, paid a small amount to do this. Um, I couldn't do it without my channel members. I couldn't do it without you guys who like and subscribe. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.